I was just driving through town here and I stopped at a construction site. I looked in the backyard and they just cut down a big black locust tree and they said I can pull up and grab a couple chunks. So you guys that live back east, you know, I see these videos of people cutting up stuff for firewood that I would be uh, making, you know, axe handles and stuff out of. But for me out here in California, that kind of material is pretty limited. So they said I could pull up. I'm going to go pull up and grab some pieces. It's good stuff, straight grain, check that out. Long enough to make ax handles. That one down there looks good. Good stuff. Okay, today's video is about splitting wood and I'm gonna split these logs up to make some tool handles and other blanks for my lathe and whatever stuff. I'm just gonna make blanks and season them and I can use them later for whatever I want. So this is going to provide an opportunity for me to cover some talking points on splitting in general. There's a bunch of things that anyone should know who's doing this in order to kind of increase your odds basically is what it comes down to. You never can know 100% what's what a piece of wood's going to do, but you can make some pretty good guesses and increase your odds a lot. I got these black locust logs in town when someone cut down a tree. They had already started to check because they had been sitting around for two days and it's pretty much as soon as you cut them they start checking. I just smeared a bunch of old lard on the ends and that helped a lot but they're starting to check and I really need to get them split up. At some point in the future I'm going to do an in-depth video covering this whole topic from like a theoretical standpoint. So this is really an essential skill if you want to make things out of wood, you know, from wild wood, like logs out of the forest. So I get a lot of my woodworking projects just when I'm cutting firewood. If I see something nice, I'll cut out an extra long length, chop it into a close proximity of what I think I'll make out of it, or make like a small billet to put on my lathe, um, oil it up and season it properly, and then it's just there when I need it. So that's essentially what I'm doing today. I'm going to have more videos in the future, um, some really good stuff on, you know, bending wood, uh, seasoning wood and of course splitting wood so uh, stay tuned for that stuff and let's get cracking one of the first things you want to do is look for knots now I can see a couple spots like here and here that look suspicious I can't tell for sure what's going on but this is a little bit lumpy and the bark looks you know different here since I think this is going to peel okay I'm going to go ahead and peel it so I can see what's really going on if it proves to be hard to peel I just I just won't bother. Now you can also see on this bark that it's straight. Um, you know, the, it goes back and forth a little, but basically all this lines up. So if this uh, wood was spiral grained, you'd really be able to see the bark, these bark lines on the outside curving like this. That's one of the first things you want to look at. Okay, now there's advantages to both splitting and sawing. It's not like a one or the other proposition, like one's always better than the other. Um, the advantage to splitting is that when you split something, you can really see exactly what the grain's doing. Like, that's going to be revealed for sure. The good thing about sawing is that you can straighten out any curves in the grain and get a, a flat board. Okay, so that's pretty much what I wanted to see. There's a knot or two right in here, and I'm going to take that into account while I'm splitting. I think I'm going to leave the rest of the bark on for now because it's just um, a hassle to take off and the rest of it looks pretty good. I don't see anything else really super suspicious. All right, so if you look here, you can see I have basically a cross um, of cracks. So these are already pretty deep cracks and I'm definitely going to split along those because they're already there, basically. So if I split along those, then I get these pieces without any cracks. Um, actually, they're starting to check real lightly here, um, which is unfortunate, but... That's, you know, just what happens when you don't get to things right away. But by splitting here, I'll get four billets. And I'm not sure what's happening on the other end of the log. Let's take a look at that. So on this end, we have a crack that goes here like this, and then one here. I'm just going to go from the other side and split it from the other side, and these will just have to end up where they end up. Just so you can see what I'm doing, I'm going to draw these cracks. Okay, so in this shot you can see the knot is up here and the cracks are here. So if I follow these, that's going to leave this knot right in the middle of one of these, this nice billet right here, which may have been the nicest billet of all. Now that's really unfortunate. So normally I would actually split it kind of like here maybe and then split right along the edge of this knot. 
and that way the knot would be on the edge of one of the billets and I could just chop it out and get rid of it. This probably goes all the way through to the center of the tree and that's going to screw up whatever I wanted to make. Now that's why you should really get this stuff uh, split up as soon as possible. It's like, you know, you drop a green tree, you make a cut, you, you smear it with fat or something to keep it from cracking. And then, you know, if it's at all dry, I mean, unless it's basically like raining or something, thinner you get the piece, um, like the thinner you process a piece down, the less likely it is to crack. And I'll talk more, a lot more about seasoning wood in some future video. But uh, yeah, the, the more you can get it reduced down close to the size that you want or into some kind of a blank, and preferably oiled on the ends at least and often on the whole thing, then it's going to season out really nice and not crack. If I didn't have a crack, what I'd do is take the hatchet and I'd start right in the very center of the tree because uh, it always splits best through the center and along lines going out. It, pretty much any line going out like this from the center. So I would start in the center and score the whole thing right exactly where I want it to split and then slowly start hitting that harder and harder and then usually eventually I'll come into the corner like this start to drive this in deeper but since this is already cracked we're just going to go ahead and um, start like this now black locust splits pretty well it's a good splitting wood so it's probably going to behave well this can go really slow like don't get impatient it's just going to keep it's not going to just start in it's going to keep bouncing out over and over again and that's okay when you're ready and you get the score that you want come into the corner like this and you'll start to be able to get it to stay but don't go too gung-ho on any one setting of the hatchet like keep keep it moving and and um see like i'll i'll split a little and then i'll come down here and that's just going to keep it splitting along the line that you really want it to split on. Okay, now we've really established that line. Of course, it was already cracked. But if it wasn't, that would be more important to really get that established how you want it before you start to lay into it. Now if you hear people say to never ever ever pound on the back of an axe, so if you're pounding with wood, um, it's fine to pound on any axe. If you're pounding on it with another piece of metal, that's a different story. But people sure like to say that you should never ever do things, especially in YouTube comments. People say never, always, or proper, my bullshit detector goes off. Now if something's splitting really well, um, and you're splitting it roughly in half, you can kind of just split it mostly from the end, but if you want to be sure the split keeps going straight, and you know some woods just aren't as well behaved as others too, then you might want to chase the, the split along the log, which is what I'm going to do here. All right, so let's look down here in this crack, and you can see these fibers crossing back and forth. Now those are pretty much what's holding this log together at this point. So what I'm gonna do is just get down in there with a hatchet and cut those in half and the log will fall in half a lot easier. Okay, there you go down there, you can really see those. You know, these hatchets are not flat-sided. They curve in every dimension. They curve, you know, this way and they curve side to side. So a wedge, the ideal wedge for this would not be like that. It would be a straight taper. But, you know, this is more likely what you're gonna have. 
So we have a lot less mass to split this time and it should go a lot easier. That's a beauty right there. Nice. So see how straight this side split? It split just pretty much pretty straight. For whatever reason, the grain in this side is different and it comes down here and starts to curve off. And also maybe because of this old injury right here to the tree, the grain kind of crosses over and does some weird stuff here. So when you get these strings attached here, don't try to just drive the thing through, but just take a second to, to cut those because they make a huge difference. You can see by, look at that, just those few fibers are basically holding the whole thing together. And there we go. So this knot goes straight through and you can usually assume that it'll go to the center. And from the looks of this right here, you can see how it kind of comes like that. It looks like the knot comes through right here. So let's say, you know, the knot's here and I want to split out this, which I do. This is uh, right in there for handles. <clears throat> So when I try to split this, it's going to hit this knot and, okay, the fibers of the tree run this way, but the fibers of the knot run that way. So you cannot split through a knot. You can break it, you can cut through it, um, but you're not going to actually split it. If I start splitting here or here, I'm going to run into that knot and it's going to screw things up. Here's the knot and the grain runs, if I follow the grain exactly from the center of the knot, it runs roughly something like that. Let's also note that the knot comes from the center of the tree, right? So that's the center of the tree. So if it comes along here, then we can draw another line from there to there. And basically this section, as far as getting a long piece out of this, is not gonna be any good. Say, well, I could build a handle out of this section right here. Then I could start splitting right about at that knot and try to split kind of right through or just to the side of the knot. And then the knot will be on either side of each of these billets and can be just kind of chopped out and thrown away. So I'm going to do that because it's kind of my best option with this piece here. Although, of course, the other option is that I just cut this knot out and use just this section. But no, I think I'm going to split the knot out just, just so we can try it here. Okay, again, through the center. And this line should go, get us right next to the knot or right through it somewhere in there. It's hard to tell exactly where we're going, but that's the idea. Again, we're going to kind of scooch along here, one little tap at a time. So we get all the way across once. You see how I'm splitting this in half? Wood splits better into equal halves by mass. So if these two masses are the same, it's more likely that the split will continue and go straight through. If you go way off to the side and try to split off something small, it's much more likely to tear out in this direction and end up splitting off kind of a wedge instead of going all the way to the other end of the log. When it you know, tears away to the side, it's called run out, and that's like a really important thing to know. If, like say if the knot was way over here, I would probably still try to split it off. I'm just saying that it's more likely that it wouldn't work out as well and that it would run out to the side. And again, if you come into the corners, you can really get the, the axe to sink in. Whereas if I had tapped it like that in the center here, it wouldn't stay. Okay, now this knot is likely to offer some kind of weird resistance here. And again, any fibers in here that I can see that are actually holding this together, I want to get in there and cut those if I can. And here they are. This is what's holding this together now is all these guys right there. See all those fibers? Okay, let's take a quick look at what we ended up with here. So uh, a couple of the billets are really nice and straight. This one is, but it has this old injury here, so the wood actually isn't very thick. Now in order to make this into something I can use, I want to get it split down 
as small as possible close to the thing I want. Like if I know what I want, I want to get a blank that's just big enough to have, you know, the extra wood I need to make that object. And again, that's going to reduce cracking because the smaller the mass of the piece of wood is, the less likely it is to uh, crack when it's seasoning. So like in this case, I'm going to split off this section here because I can tell I'm not going to use that for anything. Um, not, not, I'm not going to make anything that's going to include that. I can actually use this for something else, but we'll see. So again, if I'm splitting off a small piece from a big piece, this piece is more likely to tear away and not split straight through. So one way to stop that is just to chase this cut along. So you can do it like that or you can just keep putting in a series of wedges and chasing that along. This piece also is already almost split off. Let's get rid of that. So now let's say I decide to make, um, that I'm probably going to make a handle out of this, then I can just kind of visualize in my mind where that handle is going to be and cut out most of the wood that's not the handle, leaving maybe twice as much wood as that will be in the handle because I want a little bit of room for shrinkage and warping. So as this dries, it might warp a little or, you know, change. And I want to let it do that and stabilize itself. And then I'll chop what I want out of it. But in the meantime, if I'm sure I'm not going to use, say, this triangle here, which I'm, I am sure I'm not, I'll either chop or split that out. And that's what I'm going to do right now. Simply stated, I want to get rid of anything that I'm sure I'm not going to use and then to leave a little bit of extra bulk um, to account for shrinking and warpage. In this case, I'm not sure exactly what I'm going to be doing with this, so I'll probably leave it about like this. Chances are I'll only use this to about here because the grain gets kind of wonky here. From here to there, it's pretty straight. If I oil this whole thing up, like I'll probably use old lard or tallow, maybe with like some goat fat. And that's going to coat this wood and slow the drying way down. And it'll probably season with no checks at all, um, no cracks at all. Whereas if I just leave it like this, there's a much higher chance that it'll crack on me. So we'll see. Um, yeah, there's probably a handle in there. Not ideal, but probably good enough. Something like this is much too large to allow to season this way. It'll almost surely crack. And it's got some funky grain. You can see the, the grain goes like this and curves off to the side, which is very evident if you look at it this way. And that's, that's pretty challenging. Like, if I make a long handle out of this that goes all the way from that end to that end, there's a fairly good chance that that, when it dries, it's going to warp. You know, I'm just crossing the grain a lot. Like, the ideal handle would be a perfectly straight split. Um, and it doesn't have to be perfect to make a handle, but um, this isn't certainly not ideal. So, I want to think about this one for a while, um, but chances are, I mean, for sure I'm going to split it up, is what I'm just trying to say, is at some point I'm going to split this up before I dry it, but in the meantime, what I can do is just soak it in water and then later when I want to make something with it or decide what I want to do with it, I'll just bust a move. So there's that one. Um, this is the best one here. Let's take a quick look at these though. So here's the one that had the knot and its sibling. There you can see the knot there. So the knot's still in here and here. But if I just uh, chop that out, then, you know, I have something left. It doesn't look great. Thing, this section from here down looks pretty good. Again, I kind of want to think about it for a while and not just make this decision right now, right here on camera. Probably soak this one in water too and decide what to do with it later. It kind of looks like I could probably squeeze a long handle out of this. This is 29 inches long, but this one is the one I really want. Only all of them were like this. This is pretty straight. It looks like there may be a couple of small knots in here. Nothing major at all. So with this one, what I want is I want like a little rectangle right here. I want to get rid of the sapwood on the outside and this little triangle of heartwood here and just keep this as like a slab, kind of like a board um, in order to make an axe handle that I need to make right now. I'm going to try to split off this triangle 
hopefully that'll go easily. Now locust splits really well. Um, it's very likely to split, even when you're splitting a small piece off a big piece, it will often go ahead and split straight all the way to the, from one end to the other. So I'm gonna go ahead and try that. If it fails, it's not a big deal. I just flip it around, try to split it from the other side the same way, and anything that's left, I just chop off with a hatchet. And then I'll draw a line here and try to split that off. Now, I could also hew that off with a hatchet, but typically it's gonna pay to try to split it off. It'll save a little bit of effort and time. This is a uh, Japanese nata, N-A-T-A. I don't really know how they pronounce it, but. It's a really neat tool. It's like a heavy bush knife slash hatchet type of tool. Um, I really like this so far. I'll be reviewing it thoroughly once I've used it for about a year. In the meantime, pretty much thumbs up at this point. Now, I don't have to use this. I could use a hatchet, but this is kind of nice, especially when I'm splitting off the sapwood out here because it's nice and long. But again, this black locust is so easy splitting, it just behaves really well that it pretty much worked. It's not as thick at the bottom as it is at the top, but it didn't run out very much. Okay, so I also don't want this triangle here. So I'm going to hew that off first and make this more squared off on both ends before I split the sapwood off. All right, now splitting off the sapwood, splitting off a pretty small piece. My guess is that this is gonna tear out to one side, but that's okay, because it'll make a good demo. Okay, there you go. This is the phenomenon of run out. All right, that's it for this video and for wood splitting. This, uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'll finish this piece off. I want all this sapwood gone, so I'll chop that off. And then I'm gonna make it maybe about an inch and a half wide. And I'm gonna make an ax handle out of this, so I'll figure out where I want the handle to be, kind of lay out the pattern, chop that close to size, but leave quite a bit of extra bulk, then let it season, and if it warps, I'll have that little bit of extra wood that I can remove to straighten everything back out and get it aligned again. The smaller I get it, the faster it's going to dry. That, I want that because I want to make this soon. The thinner I get it, though, the more likely it is to warp. And if I get it really thin, it's really liable to warp. Plus, when it does, I won't have the extra wood to take off. So it's kind of a compromise. Basically, I'm going to get it to the shape I want it, like I'm making an axe handle, but I'm just going to leave it extra thick in all dimensions, and then season it, and then finish it, and haft it.